What's up guys, this is Kyle from Wax Museum, back with part two of my Hall of Fame box. And thanks to those of you that watched part one, I got a lot of good feedback from that. So hopefully you'll enjoy parts two and three just as much, if not more. And I wanna clarify here once again, this is not a trade video or a sale video. These are just cards that are in my PC that I've just been wanting to share. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in here. So we left off with Gilmore was our last player, so uh, row two starts with Manu Ginobili, and this right here is the first letter, as you can see, the letter G. It is from SP Rookie Threads, uh, and no, it, it is not a rookie letter necessarily. That's just the name of the product. I know that's kind of confusing, but there were veterans in there. But anyway, I grabbed this a few years before he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. I hit it on a buy it now, and I'm glad that I did because um, Spurs stuff especially is competitive, so to be able to get a first letter from an upper deck product of, of a name like that. I'm, I'm very happy about that. So happy to have that one in the PC. Um, next up here, we've got some couple of Hal Greer pieces. This first one here is a Spectra gold patch. And it's um, they actually had a, warm, a fleece warm-up jacket for Hal Greer. And the best patches by far will be in Flawless. There's like patches with like whole pieces of, of stars but uh, those go really high and it seems like they've been shilled over the years as well when a bunch of them have come up at the same time. So some shenanigans with those, but this is kind of like the cuff of the jacket. Uh, I'll take it though. And then also you can see, I, I mentioned it was a fleece warm up. You can really see that on this immaculate, um, immaculate standard piece. Okay, here we've got, I don't know if, if the right term for this is a, a logo woman necessarily, but this is a Becky Hammond card uh, with a relic from the 2007 WNBA All-Star Game. And um, this, even though it is a piece of the logo woman, it's from the shorts. So um, a lot of the material that they used for this set was from the shorts, and I was able to match that up. So when I saw that, and that's, that's just included in the normal print run of 444, they put all sorts of patches in there. When I saw that, and I, I kind of knew she was Hall of Fame bound, so I figured, hey, I better hurry up and pick this up because there's just not a lot of Becky Hammond stuff out there. Not a lot of WNBA game-worn stuff in general. Okay, we've got some John Havlicek stuff here. This is just a, a nice optic parallel number to nine. I think I got that in a lot at some point. Was going to move it and then decided, you know what, I kind of like that card, so I kept it. I've got this just basic legendary jerseys card here. This is one that I, I really chased down at the National and I want to say, I think this was the 2021 National that I had to chase this one down at. I saw it at a table. I'd been uh, outbid on it the December before the National. I'd been outbid on, on one of the 13. And I saw this at a table. I took a picture of it. And then I couldn't find that table again. So I had like six or seven of my friends looking for this table. We finally found it. Um, I was able to explain to the dealer, hey, I, you know, I got outbid on one of these. And we kind of settled on a price between that price and what he had it at. And I've done a, a video on shoe cards before. This is one of the thickest cards in my collection. You can see this standard jersey. You know, this is a thinner jersey card. It's not 130 point. But you can see the difference between the two. So I had to even get a special magnetic for that. Well, thankfully, they had it in one already, which is why I didn't make that sticker either. That was already on there. But I uh, left it in there and really happy to have that one. That's a tough one. Okay, another shoe card just so happens to be next here, and it is Connie Hawkins. Um, you can see the, the Hawk 42, which was kind of one of his standard autos. I know he had several variations, but uh, I thought it was funny. This is from, I, I've matched it up with some of the other pieces out there. This is from a, a pair of Nike Airs, and they did not have purple Nike Airs when Connie played, so I believe this is from an old-timers game in the early 90s, but... Uh, I'll, I'll take it. They don't clarify that on there, but I'll take it. And Connie does not have any jersey cards or any patch cards out there. His only relic cards are shoe pieces. So this is one of the better ones out there. I'd still like to get one of the sole pieces, but I haven't seen one of those in years. So I saw this at the National and um, picked it up. Very happy with that one. And I'll grab the next stack here, but I, I have another part of that shoe, not the sole, but another part of that shoe here. This is from National Treasures. 
like I said, those just don't come up often, and, and people have kind of caught on. If you want Connie Hawkins stuff, that's the only relic. Okay, Connie was also featured in this moniker set that I've talked about before that I like, and I appreciate the fact that he signed his name and then the nickname here. A lot of guys, you either get one or the other. You, you typically don't get both. So um, he understood the assignment, and, and that's not a short printed card necessarily. I mean, 199 for an inscription set is is a huge set. So um, it's still they're they're still relatively affordable if you can find them. But I don't see a lot of Connies get listed for there being 199 of them. But they're out there. If you want them, they're out there. Okay, another inscription set is this um, upper deck incredible. We got Elvin Hayes, the big E, 100 out of 100, which probably makes this one expendable, but I haven't done anything with it yet. This is another upper deck Elvin Hayes autograph. Um, moving on to a, from Hayes to Haynes, we've got uh, two of these Leaf Q Marcus Haynes patch autos. And, and who knows, you know, he, yes, he was on the Globetrotters, but he was on other iterations of Globetrotters, and I, I think he was on the Harlem Magicians at some point. Um, actually, I think he pretty much operated them, and I could be wrong there, but um, when I saw these, I they were both cheap, I mean, relative to what they are. I mean, you're just not going to get Marcus Haynes stuff in Panini products like this, so when I saw these, I had to grab both of them. I thought it was interesting. One of them, he's got the autograph all on one line. Another one here, it's stacked, but uh, those are just really great looking cards um man sometimes leaf does stuff and it just looks so right and then sometimes well we'll we'll see some later on i think in this stack that are designed by leaf that are kind of horrifying okay um so we've got a um this is the nicest spencer haywood patch that i can find it's the biggest one that i can find this is also a nice patch it's just smaller and notice we're gonna we're probably gonna get that same nicks picture on every Spencer Hayes patch. Actually, no, I, I I take that back. I know there is a relic where he's like jumping for a rebound, I think. Small relic, though. These are the, the biggest, nicest patches I could find for Spencer Haywood. Um, another Hall of Fame guy here that a lot of people didn't consider. I was actually picking these up uh, earlier just because they're 70s stuff, but I also had an idea that he would probably eventually make the Hall of Fame just when you were looking at kind of the odds and the I don't know what they call it, the ratings on Basketball Reference. I figured he'd make it, but this is Lou Hudson. And they had a warm-up jacket for Lou Hudson, and a lot of the prime pieces that you'll see for him are just stripes from the sleeve. They're not really prime pieces, but they kind of pass as that because they look that way. Um, this doesn't have those. I, I just use that as an example. This has some nice stitching, though. Not many of the copies have that. But here are, um, I think these are out of 10. Yeah. I kind of went on a Lou Hudson kick, so I, I was picking these up when I saw them. This it, it either that jacket either said Atlanta. I, I'm pretty sure it said Atlanta because I've seen the whole letter A, and and I know yes, I know Hawks has an A in it, but I think I've seen two of them. So I think it says Atlanta, and that's pieces from that. Not a lot of prime pieces out there for him. Speaking of of not a lot of stuff out there, I know I'm probably sounding like a broken record here, but this Dan Issel. Spectra Gold ABA Kentucky Colonels patch. And that is just a nice card. Um, I saw another one of these. I passed the listing on to someone else who uh, ended up grabbing a bunch of them. I, I just sent it to them because they didn't have one at the time. I kind of wish I had grabbed it now, but um, great looking patch. I'm not, I'm, I mean, I've got one. I'm happy. Great looking patch. And I, I just love the gold on that card too. Here's another Dan Issel. So if Panini used the jersey that I'm, I'm pretty sure I've matched it up to, then um, they had a jersey and then a pair of shorts that had a hole in it. And the explanation that was given for the hole was that he used to dry his um, garments on a hotel lamp. And apparently they, he got too close to the bulb or it, it sat on the bulb for a while and it burned a hole in those shorts. So uh, I'd love to find a Panini piece that has um, those scorched part of the shorts i haven't seen one yet i've actually been looking for years and uh, maybe i gave away something i'm looking for there but uh, i just thought that was a funny story nonetheless okay you've seen this one on the channel before this is a game worn allen iverson logo man 
that um, I want to say I rescued it. I mean, I didn't do the whole thing here, but I rescued it from a hideous Jersey Fusion uh, mashup, whatever you want to call it. And I sent it to Reclaim Customs, and we kind of went back and forth on the design. I told them what I was looking for. I picked a picture. I said, hey, you know, I, I want a, a picture of the source material on the back, so he's got that as well. And then I uh, retrieved it from him at the National and got it signed at the National. And uh, there's a video of that on my channel if that's ha something you haven't seen yet. But that was a fun little adventure. And I ended up making money on, on this whole thing because the card that the logo was originally paired with, I sold for more than I have into the whole project. So I thought that was kind of an interesting way to get an Allen Iverson Game Worn Logo Man. And it looks great. I'm very happy with it. Um, definitely not a card I, you know, I would have bought otherwise, but it, it made for a fun project and a fun story. Okay, this is a Magic Johnson uh, Dream Team Relic, and it, let's see if it mentions that on the back, but they bought a, a bunch, you know, it just says the enclosed swatch is guaranteed by Panini America, but they bought a bunch of Dream Team shorts, and they use them especially in this Hall of Fame set. I actually pulled this card which um, I'd love to have the Prime version, but I'm, this one, I'm, I pulled it, so I'm keeping it. I don't rip a lot of stuff. I, I was very happy when I got that one. That, you know, that box, I think I also pulled a Russell Westbrook on-card auto. I wish I had kept that. I sold it for something stupid like 30 bucks, which at the time was the going rate, but it is what it is. Okay, another Magic Johnson card here, just a, a basic swatch. Um, this is a, a great Magic Johnson patch. I just, that, that patch window... They had to leave that cutout on there, so um, I, it's just part of the design. It is what it is, but a uh, great-looking card there. This is a Playing Days Magic Johnson refractor from when he came back and uh, had a debate with some friends recently about peel or no peel, and if you've heard the most recent episode of the podcast, episode 247, I had Jake Roy on, 90s b-ball card, to give his hot takes and one of his hot takes is to peel your finest cards. And that, that's not always a popular take. Um, I kind of like the, the option of leaving it on there and knowing that I can always peel it. But I, I understand why people peel them because this would definitely look better without it. I think I might even have another copy that is peeled. Sometimes that's my loophole. So, hey, maybe let me know in the comments after you're done watching this peel or no peel. What team are you on? All right, this is a 2012 Sam Jones Prism Silver. I've also got a Sam Jones Relic, and notice it's kind of that fleece material that we had with Hal Greer, so this is also from a warm-up. Got a beautiful Sam Jones Acetate Autograph here. I got that at the, I think, the 2019 National. I think I got that from uh, my friend Darren. At trade night, I bought it off of them. Just a beautiful card. Okay, now we move into the Jordan section, and I'll just tell you up front here, there's nothing spectacular in here for Jordan. Never had a big Jordan PC. I do have this um, mirror image refractor. The embossing is a little bit off. I got this at a card store for $7, so, so you couldn't argue with that. There's the other side for anyone that's interested. Usually they just want to see this side here. And, and not for Ron Mercer, by the way. These are just some Jordans that that I've liked over the years. This, this uh, Wizards Chrome card. This 97 Chrome card. StarQuest Red. Um, I pulled one of these growing up, and I, I just thought it was red because he was on the Bulls, and because like my John Starks was blue. Uh, I had no idea that was one of the more rare versions. And then this Skylights here. I always thought this was just an amazing... I thought it was an insert set when I was little. I didn't realize it was a subset. I didn't realize that until I was an adult. But I just that was just one of the coolest Michael Jordan cards to me growing up. So I, I still, even as an adult, you know, you know what? I've got it top loaded. I've got it in with my some of my favorite cards here. Okay, this one has um, a pretty special story to me because I... Um, have collected on and off for the better part of, I don't know, since 1995. And um, around 2006, which is when Ron Artest asked to be traded, I started going to more baseball games. So I switched to baseball for a few years. 
And then around 2010, I saw some of these blasters. They were marked down. This is It's funny now because it's the 2009 Upper Deck Blasters. Of course, there's curry and there's all sorts of good stuff in there. But these blasters were $10 a piece at Walmarts, at Targets. So I was I, I bought three or four of them at least. I believe this is the first one I bought, though, and out popped a Jordan Julius Irving dual jersey. And yeah, I know there's some damage there, but man, it's, it's, a, it's a Jordan Irving dual jersey. And that really hooked me back into basketball, even though I still dabbled in baseball a little bit. Uh, man, I have been hooked back on basketball since then. And so for me, that, that card has a lot of meaning, but um, definitely exciting to pull a Jordan dual game materials card from a, a discounted retail blaster. Okay, remember when I talked about how there's some hideous leaf designs out there? Well, this is one of them. But when you've got a Bernard King laundry tag that's that big, you kind of put up with it, you deal with it. So that's what I did. But um, yeah, so that's a one-on-one, but just, just hideous design. So hopefully... It, it's hard telling. Sometimes Leaf has some amazing stuff, and then sometimes it's it's just when it's when it's bad, it's really bad. Okay, nice big Bernard King absolute patch. I like this set. You're going to see another one from this set here pretty soon. At least one, if not two, in this row of cards. And then here's one I showed off on social media recently. This was a Bob Knight card that I got signed through the mail. I think I have another one signed in my Ginter box. But it was in silver, and the, the pen smeared pretty bad. This one's still smeared a little, but not too bad. So, uh, you know, I, I love Genter cards, and then Bobby Knight was my coach growing up as an Indiana fan, so that seemed like a no-brainer to me. Okay, well, we did have another one, and it, it was very soon. It's Bob Lanier. I think that's from a pair of shorts. Definitely looks like the waistband from a pair of shorts. And these big patches, unfortunately, got creases around the, the edges. That was, was fairly common for these. But for big patches, I'll take it. It is what it is. All right, got an on-card auto of Bob. We've got a Nancy Lieberman monikers card where she signed Lady Magic. I don't think I've seen her sign that on other stuff, but it's not to say she hasn't. It's just I haven't seen it. Here's a, a pretty tough one. And this is not one that really sticks out. I mean, it's not visually, it there doesn't look like there's a, you know, there's no picture of a person playing basketball on it, but this is an Earl Lloyd card and it's a certified autograph. And I've seen people on eBay when they list their Earl Lloyd stuff, they'll say Jackie Robinson of the NBA. Well, Earl was one of three black players to enter the league at the same time in the 50s. And I, I'll, I know I'm going to mess this up, so I'll just say one of them was the first one drafted. One of them was the first one signed. Earl Lloyd was the first one to play in a game. So he was technically the first one to get game minutes. So, um, But he shouldn't get that credit by himself, even though I, I do want to recognize him for that. He, there were multiple players that um, were kind of taking on that, that challenge uh, head first. So anyway, this is the Earl Lloyd card, though. This is the certified autograph. Okay, we've got Carl Malone and Jeff Hornacek, which I like tags. I'll leave it at that. I'm not a big fan of either one of those guys. Uh, I do like Moses Malone, though. I like Moses Malone a lot. I think he is severely underrated and uh, or doesn't get the credit that he deserves. So this is a Sport Kings letter. I haven't made a video about it yet, but I have matched that up to the jersey that it came from in a, in a game photo of him wearing that jersey, but that will come at a later date. I'm not sure if I have the exact date. I, I think I do. I'll have to look back at my notes. Um, these are from that same jersey. I was going to move those because they came in a lot, and then I just kind of decided, well, you know what? I kind of like these two, so I don't know. Not sure what, what's going to become of those. Got this Moses Malone Time Warp autograph, and you saw one from that set in my first video with Isaiah Thomas. It's another just basic Moses Malone card, but you might recognize this guy too over here, Joe Bryant. He had a famous son who played in the NBA. Here's a um, Moses Malone Spectra patch, gold Spectra patch, numbered to 10. Got that at one of the Nationals in Chicago. 
Here is a Crusade. I think it's numbered to 49. Yeah, that's the purple. And got more Moses stuff here coming up. We're getting toward the end. So this one's pretty cool, even though, yeah, it's Jersey Fusion. I know people have their thoughts on that. Uh, number one, it is Jersey numbered, 2 out of 10. So I like that aspect of it. But also, I he didn't play a lot of games for the Spurs, and I found the auction for the jersey itself, and they photo matched it partially using this card. So the jersey that he's wearing on this card is the same as the jersey pieces that are in this card. And like I said, it's jersey numbered. So uh, when I saw those come out, I said, you know, I have to have one. This one popped up, and, and I realized, hey, this is the, the perfect one for me. The price wasn't all that bad. I think I got it for maybe 30 bucks. And, and I'm a big Moses Malone fan, so, ab you know, absolutely. So speaking of Moses Malone, got another patch here from Trilogy. Got another patch from this 2009 top set. Like I said, I don't like the design, but I do like the patches and the players in the set. Got another Jersey Fusion card here. Uh, these are player worn. So they, they did a, a, a good job of making this, uh, finding some player worn shorts that matched up with Jazz with kind of the color scheme, but it's these are not jazz shorts. These are just player-worn shorts from some sort of exhibition, so not an NBA game, but, I mean, it, it's a Maravich relic, and, and I got this one for a great price. Speaking of Maravich, there's a 75 Maravich roughed up. That's all right. Okay, this is a Dick McGuire Sport Kings relic. Uh, it's one of those where the design the design stinks on this. I mean, who wants a mock-up? It's not even a picture of a real jersey. It's a mock-up of a jersey hanging up. And I think this relic is from a pair of shorts. But, um, yeah, where else are you going to find Dick McGuire relics? So you know what? I'll take it. Okay, this Kevin McHale I've owned for over 20 years. It was one of the, the few early patch pieces I bought that wasn't a Pacers card. I just, I like the old school stuff. I like the old stitching on this. I like the fact that it was a green parallel or emerald or whatever you want to call it. It's number 12 of 15. And I still got it. Here's another McHale paired with Reggie Lewis. Here's a pretty cool McHale soul of the game card. And, and you know, Kevin was known for his footwork. So I thought that was a, a fitting card to get for Kevin. And we're in the home stretch here. Here's our last stack for row number two. Check out this George Mikan patch. Numbered 9 out of 10 from National Treasures. And I've had people ask, are these the timeline materials? Uh, is that a game-dated patch? No, it's not. They don't match up. Um, I believe this is from a jacket. And I've looked for years. I've even found the, the tag material in other cards. I can't find a match for where Panini got this. So that, that's one Panini mystery I'd love to find out. But I believe it's a jacket because I think this is the inner lining of that jacket. And I've seen some old Lakers jackets that look like that and have those characteristics. So. Okay, Sidney Moncrief patch. I bought an entire Bucks lot to get this patch. It's one of the nicest ones I've seen. For Sydney, a lot of the Buck stuff from that era, they, it, it wasn't stitched. It was more pressed on. Or, I don't know, technically. I, someone explained to me the difference between screen printing and heat press. I, I can't tell you the difference. But anyway, it, it's not stitched. Here's a Moncrief. Nice on-card auto. We got another Monikers card. Earl Monroe, where he's got Pearl. Had to have that one. And that one like the Hawkins is out of 199. Uh, the print runs vary on all of these. Like I think Larry Bird, Larry Legend is out of 25 and that one sells for super high so I'll never have that one. Here's a ticket to the pros card. I'm not so interested in, in Beadrins. I'm more interested in Chris Mullen who is a Warriors executive at the time. You might remember the Patrick Ewing card from this Trading Places set. Well here is the Dikembe Mutombo version. I needed a nice Mutombo patch. Well, how about a duel? How about two of them? And then last but not least, we've got NBA MVP, two-time MVP, Steve Nash. Big part of the letter S. And that card is numbered. I can't find it. I think it's two out of three. I'm not seeing it on. Oh, there it is, right on the right side. Two out of three. 
All right, so that was uh, part two. There's a lot that you could probably comment. Remember, I had the, the peel or no peel debate. And then in general, if you have anything you want to ask about or anything you mentioned, feel free to mention that in the comments. Remember, there are new episodes of the audio podcast that come out every Thursday. And as always, thanks for watching.